These musicians playing out of the depths of their heart and just quiet, singing out of the depths of their heart. And we are grateful. We are grateful for them. Certainly, too, this fine ministerial staff to Reverend Chapman, to Reverend Brown, to Reverend Caldwell and his, his congregation. God is still good to us. God is still good to us. God is still good to us. Certainly to our ushers, our officers, and that our deacons. It is indeed a blessing to be here. If you have your mind to get one and invite your attention to the book of Isaiah, the 40th chapter. To the book of Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Beginning at the 27th verse to the book of Isaiah, the 40th chapter, beginning at the 27th verse. We have been with you in this series. We considered Simeon and Luke, the second chapter, waiting without withering. Consider David and Psalms, the 40th number, waiting without worry. Now we're going to consider this morning Isaiah's word to Israel and to us, waiting without waver. Isaiah the 40th chapter. Isaiah the 40th chapter, beginning at the 27th verse. You'll find these words recorded. From the English Standard Version of the Greek. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregard, disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint. To him who has no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. Young men shall fall exhausted, but they who wait for the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and did not fail. We would endeavor this morning to fix our eyes on this passage of Scripture. Preach with this topic in our minds, waiting without wavering. Would you pray with me? Our Father and our God, we come saying thank you for this privilege of preaching. Praying that to match the preaching privilege, you would give us preaching power. But we realize and understand that preaching cannot be done unless you come. And oh God, I study, but I need the spirit. Pray, but I need your power. But pray, God, that you would pour fresh oil on my head. That you would indwell us with your Holy Spirit. But we realize the preaching cannot come unless you come. Somebody here, oh God, needs words. So hide me now behind my cross in Calvary. That these old people might see absolutely all of you. Positively none of me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me one more time, Lord. One more time. And if I'm too high, Lord, bring me down. If I'm too low, fill me up to where you need me to be. Probably on everything inside. In the preaching moment and after the preaching moment, we pray that you might get glory. Yes. Those that are saved might be encouraged. Mm -hmm. Those that are lost might come running saying, I yield, I yield, but must let them be saved. Mm -hmm. It is in your precious son Jesus' name we do pray. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. comes to the nation that in effect the waiting period is about 
about to end. All right. Because, oh, brothers and sisters, no matter what comes in your life, no matter the trial, the trouble, and the tribulation, all of your situations, all of your circumstances come with an expiration date. Yeah. God doesn't bring you to what he cannot bring you through. And after a while, the period of waiting, after a while, the period of sickness, after a while, the period of disappointment must come to a close. Right. God is getting his people ready to move out of this phase of waiting, but their minds must be adjusted and their hearts must be attuned if they're going to go to the place where God has for them. Right. If they're going to be the people God divinely superintends for them to be. But we find as we approach the text this morning mm -hmm. All right. that waiting has affected them. Because in a few verses of the text to frame our context, they have murmured, they have wondered, they have worried whether or not God has heard their groans. Right. Here the text began to take shape. Why do you say, O Jacob, yes. speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded from my God. Oh, brothers and sisters, their context changed their conversation about God. Oh, brothers and sisters, life is full of ups and downs. I've had my good days, and I've had my bad days. I've even had my hills to climb. But one thing I discovered is I ought not let my context I ought not let my situation change my conversation about God. Y'all are quiet on me. Let me preach it where you can reach it. On my good days, he's still a good God. And on my bad days, he's still a good God. When I'm well, he's still a heal. When I'm sick, he's still a heal. When I have peace and consolation, he's still my joy in sorrow. When hell is breaking loose, he's still my joy in sorrow. You ought not let your circumstance change your conversation about God. They had been in this place for so long. It had begun to affect their mindset when it came to God's power. They had been in their place of waiting for so long that it had begun to poison their perspective when it came to God's ability. Uh -huh. And oh, brothers and sisters, during your points and periods of waiting, yeah. you've got to realize that circumstances might change, yeah. but God is still the same. Although that perspective about God has changed, thank you, God. Verse 28 shows us that God's character has not changed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, what they said about him has changed, but who he is hasn't changed. You've got to know that we live in a moment that scholars consider the post-Christian moment, the post-church moment. That there's nothing else that the church can do for culture and society. Bonhoeffer writes that society seems to have come of age. And we've seen to begun to believe that there's nothing the church or Christianity has to offer. Right. The society's view about God has changed. But I'm glad this morning that God has not changed himself. Right. What they write about him in the news has changed. But the character of God hasn't changed. Right. You want to get an amen right through there? Somebody has told you that you ought to throw in the towel. Yeah. Somebody has told you that you ought to give up hope. But the text teaches. 
appreciate about God yeah. that God is still. That, that, that don't sound here. All right. That don't sound complicated. That doesn't sound overly arrogant like or theological. Mm -hmm. But if you know that God is still, that'll help get you through some stuff. Right. Let me help you. Let me help you. He's still a healer if you're sick. Right. You need to know that God is still. He's still bread on the table. You need to know that God is still here. Still joy in sorrow. You need to know that God is still here. Still a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. You need to know that God is still. Culture changes. Politics changes. The mood of the country changes. But we serve a God that is conversation about God change when their context changed, right. when their circumstance became unpleasant and, unpleasant and difficult, the things that they said about God changed. But although their conversation changed about God, when their context changed, the character of God is still the same. All right. And you need to know that this morning. I don't know what you're going through, and I don't know what you're dealing with, but you need to know that God hasn't changed. Amen. You need to know that God still has power. Yes. And sisters function as a kind of referendum or a kind of examination between what is going on in the hearts of people that have waited so long that they've gotten discouraged. Mm -hmm. Who God really is. Because in verse 27, we see that wavering concept of God. Yes. In verse 28, we see the consistency of God's character. Yeah. But all brothers and sisters, if you are going to get out of this period of waiting, yeah. if you allow God to get weak in your mind, if you allow the circumstance and the situation to change how you feel of God, mm -hmm. your waiting period is divinely designed to correct what you think about. All right. Sometimes God will let you wait long enough to learn your lesson, long enough to learn that he's not to be doubted, but rather he is to be trusted. He'll let you wait long enough to learn that you ain't got to wonder where he is and you don't have to worry about where he is but he's everywhere all the time. But just their concept of God that has been damaged during that period of waiting. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> if the period of waiting is going to come to a close. Let me say it like this. You've got to learn the lesson. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, preacher, what's the lesson? Here it is in verse 28. Mm -hmm. Have you not known? Mm -hmm. Have you not heard right. that the Lord is the everlasting God? All right. All right. Creators of the ends and the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is uncertain. Here it is. Write this home. Write this down and take it home with you. Waiting should teach you that God is not like you and me. For yeah. oh God, this period of waiting functions to teach us that God is radically different than you and I. Right. If you and I wait long enough, we all get weak. Yeah. But God never gets weak. Yeah. If you and I wait long enough, we'll begin to wonder and worry. Yeah. But his, he does not fail, think, or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. This moment in time functions to teach them that God doesn't have their problems. Yeah. No, I need a God yeah. who's stronger than me. Yeah. I need a God who can see farther than I can. Yeah. I need a God 
God. Yeah. The past more power than I have. Yeah. I need a God that never gets tired. Because right. I never get tired of calling him. Right. And I like the way the old church said, he's a leaning post. Right. And the whole world can lean on him at the same time. I like how the old church said, Jesus is on the main line. Right. Tell him what you want. That yeah. his line is never busy. You can call him and I can call him at the same time. Because God is different than you and I. You get irritated. You get aggravated. You get down. You get discouraged. But God sits up in heaven never tired, never weak, never weary, never wavering. God. Oh, 
concept of God's power has to change. It's relational. Yeah. It's redemptive. Uh -huh. 
Paul's been losing his shame. But then thirdly, it's restoring. Yeah. Which means you'll be better mm. at the end yeah. than you were at the beginning. All right. They that wait yeah. upon the Lord, mm. he shall not renew yeah. their strength. Mm. Right. That, that's renew, that's exchange. Right. But God is so good that, that when you're done waiting, mm. he won't let you look down. That's why folks don't believe you've been through anything. Because at the end of your waiting period, you look better than you did before. That's why you don't look like you have a stroke. That's why you don't look like you have a heart attack. That's why you don't look like you've been depressed. That's why you don't look like you've dealt with anxiety. That's why you don't look like you've been up and getting down. That's why you don't look like you've been betrayed and left for dead. That's why. Thank <laughs> you. 